Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Iconic Repaints. Today I am featuring a video on uh, pretty much what what might be my crowning achievement. I mean, if this is literally if I if I've peaked with this guy, then I'm okay with that. I I could I could ride into the sunset happy because honestly, this is the guy that all my that this whole channel, this whole journey, all these painting, these Funko Pops, it all is because of this guy. This is the kit that has that I knew I couldn't pass up on. This is the one that I knew that I couldn't invest in it and you know just not do it justice with very sloppy or mediocre paintwork. So I owe everything to this one. This is the T Facto Godzilla Evolution 2. Uh, the studio did release a Godzilla Evolution 1 kit. I mean, you know, they, we didn't know at the time there was going to be a part 2. I always really liked it, but I missed a pre-order and I wasn't, you know, nowhere mentally near ready um, of putting together my own kits. So I kind of always admired it from afar. Besides, I've never seen it, I think, sold um, for less than $1,000 at least. And that's because it's part of it is because not only are the kits kind of expensive to begin with unassembled, but you're paying for somebody who put their time into painting it and building it. Um, you know, let's flip that building it and then painting it. And, uh, you know, so, uh, that's, you can't really expect less than that. But anyway, so I've mentioned in previous videos, especially some of the Funko Pop videos that, um, you know, I wanted to get into these kits and uh, the Funko Pops were a very relatively inexpensive way to practice painting, develop just some kind of skill with shading and texture and line work, all these things. Because my goal was this guy and I really couldn't uh, allow something so beautiful to, to be built and then just jack it all up with a, with a bad paint job mind you i did inquire about actually having people build it for me and uh by the time you pay for this kit to come from japan ship to you and then to have to ship it back out to somebody so they could build it um and then then you then you pay for that and then you risk them shipping it back all together and just i was i was worried about it you know what if what if uh, something broke? What if, like, you know, through shipping, like, I ended up having to, to build something again anyway? And honestly, and I've, I've, I've learned this through doing it. I don't care what you pay somebody. You're not going to like it as much as you do if you paint it yourself. Not only because uh, you're doing it and it's yours and it's unique and it's custom and it's, you know, but also because no one who who's doing this on the side for uh for, you know for money has the time really to really get into all the details and, and and exact little specifics that you want i could not imagine building this for somebody else with how much time and, and energy i put into this guy but uh so uh, yeah, a little background on how to get this. This, I get, like I said, this is from Tease Facto. Uh, I don't. I'm not a huge expert on on the resin kits from from Japan. Uh, I know there's a lot of different kits. I know you know some are licensed, some are not licensed. And Tease Facto is one of the um, higher quality studios out there. But I, I'm pretty sure it's like a one man show. So this guy will create a sculpt uh, uh, and. And I guess he'll have it turned made into like a cast or something like that, so they could obviously make duplicates. And I think that's all done by like one guy, so it's it's a very limited amount of kits that are created, and they don't ship internationally. So you have to have somebody with a Japanese address kind of forward it to you, uh, which is what I did. And so it took a while to get to me, which was I had I was completely fine with, because. I knew as long as this guy wasn't, you know, in my in my house, then I could keep practicing on these Funko Pops and other Godzilla things I've edited along the way that I've already posted videos up. So when this thing, when this box finally arrived, I mean, I was I was so antsy because I I knew what I wanted it to look like, but I didn't know how to really get there, and I didn't feel comfortable with, with my skill set. 
I, uh, I never forget the painting is only one aspect and I started to feel a little more confident with that, but I had no confidence when it came to the building of it. Uh, you know, there's, there's definitely a process to it. And man, this thing will test your patience. I mean, especially if you are doing it like something that you're really passionate about it. This, this made me realize how little patience I have. Uh, so yeah, you crack open the box. It comes into a whole bunch of pieces. All each of these spines, they come separate. Uh, they all have to be matched up. Uh, through every little slot in his back um, it's it's thick heavy resin it's really like I said good quality but there is a little bit of um, like every once in a while there's like a little kind of extra like a, a, a bleeding um, of extra resin that's that's you have to like sand off and um, smooth everything out then of course you're, you, you have to wash the pieces when they come out of the box because the chemicals and stuff like that. So you kind of just let them like sit overnight. And then you want to obviously line everything up. And in the heavier portions of the body, you need to pin. So you're trying to pin things accurately to where they would fit. Um, so uh, it's like the tails because this guy has got a big tail. And then the legs, you want to do um, the arms. I don't think I did my arms. I mean, I don't think it's really necessary for to do the arms. The head, I don't think I did either because, I mean, it's really just sitting on the top of his body. It's not really too much extra weight, but definitely the legs, definitely the tail. Um, so you got to make sure that's all lined up so you don't have, like, these huge gaps. If you do have any little extra seams or gaps, then you have to putty them up, basically, or use clay and, and other materials to just get rid of any of the seam work there. And uh, once that's all glued together... And you've gotten rid of your seams or, you know, then you can go on to doing like the, uh, the priming. Of course, priming is very important because I can tell you firsthand, paint is not going to stick to this body uh, without priming first. So the priming is very important. A couple layers of that. Then I then you start your, your base coat. Um, and I picked a very dark gray, like a Payne's gray as my base coat. Uh, it went over that a few times. I, I hand paint everything, so it took a while. And then from there, I started with like kind of like just adding a, a lighter, you know, some lighter gray colors. I knew I wanted him a lighter color than the rest of God the Godzillas in my collection. I still think it's a it's a very Godzilla-ish um, color combination, color palette to him, but it is definitely lighter. And, and depending on the lighting it's in, it's um, it could you know there's definitely different shades. I'll get I'll get to that in a moment. So. After that, I did. Um, I started doing like dry brushing, which was like an, a lighter gray, of course. And I did some highlights, which I added uh, some little bit of like aqua and green colors in there. Um, trying to think. So uh, one thing I realized, well, I was kind of help um, informed. Oh man, I got. I had so much kind of help and and, and advice uh, for building this because I was so paranoid my OCD was kicking in I mean this was it's an expensive kit it's a rare kit you're not gonna get a lot of chances to just do something like this over again if you mess something up so um yeah a lot of a lot of guys were um helping me out in in the in the kit Kaju kit modeling Facebook group um I think Ron McKay who was one of them uh, Steve Sarah Sarah I'm going off the top of my head Steve Sarah Galoni, I think. Um, David Arakpo was helping me out a lot. Uh, and uh, John Heyman was helping me out. I appreciate all these people definitely taking the time out that they did. They answered all my questions. And they have, you know, fantastic, you know, ama an amazing experience. And they've, they've put out some incredible pieces. So, um, and of course. Of course, John Legrand. Uh, Le he's got his own channel on here, Legrand, uh, Legrandzilla. You should definitely check that out. There's my shameless plug. Hey, like and subscribe my video here too. If that's you know, this is something you want to see more of. Uh, but um, okay, so I, you know, like one of the things that they told me to do was do the mouth first. Like it's it's a lot easier to do it before you attach it because it's it's really hard to get in the gums and, and the teeth if it's already attached to the head and everything. So. Um, I did that. I did like the teeth and gums separately before I attach anything. And same thing with the arms. I mean, John Legrand told me to uh, do the arms separate, like paint them, because once they're attached with this pose, uh, they're really hard to kind of get in there. And that's another thing. Uh, this pose is unique compared to everything else I collect. I mean, 
Uh, he's got this very confrontational, like, come at me, bro, stance. He almost just looks like he's really sinister, like he just does not give a shit. And I love it. Most of the Godzillas in my collection, he got, like, this walking, charging kind of pose with, like, the arms flailed out, one one leg forward. I mean, it's, it, it's you know, tail swinging. It, it's as about as, as dynamic as a pose as you could usually ask for in a Godzilla figure but i mean i've got a ton of them with the same idea so i'm happy this guy is doing something different and he just looks so like not impressed and he reminds me uh, this design is like i said it's an original design it's a concept but you definitely see traits of different various godzillas in there um i think you see uh like definitely uh, definitely like the Millennium Spikes for sure. And then you have uh, a very kind of Heisei um, build to them. But I think you see that the face is very GMK-ish, just a little more aggressive looking. Uh, GMK was like a Godzilla that was a, was a god, like literally was a god. He wasn't just a creature, um, you know, that was evolved into a bigger creature because of hydrogen bombs. Like he was legitimately, um, a, you know, an embodiment of, of evil, angry, not evil, but angry spirits. And uh, in that movie, he just is so nonchalant in his evilness that, like, I feel like this kit kind of takes that a step further. Like, if GMK Godzilla hit the next evolution in his pokemon um cycle like i feel like this is what he would look like um i really like the spikes kind of like going up around the arms that's not really you know that's kind of in, in the back of the thighs that's a, not accurate to really any godzilla it's a brand new idea um i love the teeth the teeth are so like just menacing and ferocious looking i mean it's just so unnatural and uh, the expression on his face he's got a really great looking face uh probably my favorite this is probably my favorite Godzilla design I've ever seen which is why I could not pass up on this kit I always I've said this in a couple times and I, I can't really put my finger on it but the front angle of this guy's face though he reminds me of Koba from the planet of the apes the newer ones I don't know what it is I just I just think it's like his expression his his that glare like he's just he's waiting for you to give him a reason to just snap your neck and uh and yeah so um absolutely love it amazing piece uh they you know these factos definitely and now having built it and seen the quality of it they definitely have reaffirmed what i've always heard they are one of the premier studios to to uh you know follow with if you're interested in these kits for sure this is the the piece i couldn't miss um you know he's I, all right so from from the floor to the top of his head is about, I want to say, 38 centimeters. And then his tail comes up a little higher. So to the top, to the tip of his tail, I think it's 43 centimeters. Or I should say the highest part of his tail. Uh, overall, he's like a 15 or 16 inch figure. So he's, he's you know, he's big and he's, he's definitely got some heft to him. He's heavy. Uh, and honestly, this was the most rewarding experience I think I've ever done. Did as far as anything related to painting anything or building anything i did i did models as a kid love like cars and stuff like that because model shops used to be a thing that was kind of common um and i always you know i was young so uh it never came out the way i wanted to so i would never even finish them i'd be like it doesn't look like how it's supposed to look on the box i hate it i'm done with it and uh, i would never really go back to them i just figured it really wasn't my cup of tea and honestly after building this one it's still not my cup of tea but not because i can't do it but because i it just really brought out the ocd in me the and the anxiety as far as like i hate leaving things like i hate i just want to see it put together like when i'm halfway through the process i'm not having fun like other people told me to um i'm not enjoying it because i'm like there's so much that can still go wrong <laughs> And I was just like, until it's all put together, like, and it's exactly how I want it to look, uh, I'm just not going to be happy. Like, I'm going to be thinking about this while I'm, like, tossing in, in bed all night because I'm like, oh, man, like, I really want to get that other leg on or I really want to see this. I'm, I'm like, t I'm over worrying about how this tail is going to come out or whatever the case may be. It's, I don't know if it's for me, but yet 
have after this kit i've i've done like three or four kits already um godzilla kits mind you all vinyl i'm not i don't know if i'm ready to do another resin resin it's just a whole different beast but the detail is better than vinyl for sure uh, it feels more quality it feels like a heavier piece and um yeah uh overall just a, a definitely a, a great experience great time i'm so happy that i did it that i didn't pay somebody to do it it's uh it's all mine I, and even after i initially thought i was done man i was probably doing little edits and changes for like probably three or four or three or four weeks until i finally got it to where it's at now and uh even in these pictures honestly i'm gonna be honest with you i i, I did the eyes again it's like just i just kept adding more and more to the eyes because something kept telling me it's the eyes just aren't as perfect as i want them to be and in in pictures you know you could kind of tell like what the eye detail a little more in person you couldn't tell like the eyes they look they, they've looked fine for a month but i just keep doing a little little tinkering here and there now i'm really happy with how the eyes look i'm, I'm gonna i i, I could pray um, I'm praying that I can finally leave this baby alone and just this, put him in a display case and call it a day. And um, I'm sure I'll probably feature this guy in more videos to come because it, this might be as good as it gets for me. I appreciate everybody for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or anything like that, if you just want to reach out to me directly, uh, I, I've been answering a ton of questions about it since um, I've put them up on Facebook and on Reddit and everything. So. Um, you know, by all means, I, I aim to help where I can. Thank you guys again. Uh, I get, and if you, if you don't remember, here's a reminder. This is Tease Facto Godzilla Evol Evolution 2. There is another one, but this is part two. This is the brand new one came out earlier this year. Um, and yeah, just probably my favorite piece in my entire collection. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Peace.